Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be considering the variable scope versus the magnifier behind a red dot. Okay, so uh, here we've got a primary arms, one to eight. Okay, so keep it in one power, rotate this all the way over if you want eight power, rotate this back if you want one power. Uh, in one power, this kind of works like a red dot, but if your face is not on the gun, all you're going to see is a shadow. So you got to have your face in the right position, okay? uh, which I think is a major uh, disadvantage as far as trying to use this as a red dot. Okay? Now in a power, right, as a de at, you know, for distance shooting, of course, you're going to have your, right, your face on the right position. All right. So um, for distance shooting in a power, uh, this works great. Um, in one power for CQB, again, if you don't get that, that your face in the right position, get your eyeball, your eye at the proper distance behind the glass, you're going to see shadow, okay? Now, considering the red dot, okay, um, with the red dot over here, right, if you come up and you are in an awkward position like this, right, you're not going to see shadow, okay? Uh, and if you can get your red dot... You can get that red dot, or in this case a green dot, on target. You will be able to hit the target. All right, so let's say you're on the ground in some weird position, right? Like this. A weird position like this. Flip it over to the other side. Over this side. Again, upside down gun now. Upside down gun. I take your head shots now, right? Head shots I'm taking. Not empty. All right. The last one with the head shot. So with with this, okay, regardless what position you're in, all right, you're not gonna see a shadow if you can. You can have that red dot all the way in the corner. You'll hit your target, okay? With this and the one power, in that same position, all I see is black in my glass, okay? All right, so, so here's the thing. It, as a CQB gun, right? As a CQB gun, okay, this variable 1 to 8 scope cannot do the job of... Uh, of a CQB optic as well as a red dot, okay? Now, as a distance scope, right? So this one over here, okay, I've got the Holosun um, HM3X, a three times magnifier, okay? At distance, okay, I get three times magnification, okay? Uh, this one over here, okay, that's the Vortex, Vortex 6X, Micro 6X, okay? I get six times magnification, okay? So, 6x magnification, 6x magnification, right? Um, this will do the job uh, just as well as any fixed 6 power scope or any uh, variable 1 to 6 scope. This is, you know, when you're looking at distance, you're going to see the same thing, okay? Um, now, there might be some differences in glass clarity, uh, but I, I think that's more of a comfort issue. I mean... Um, with, with this gun over here, I was hitting one MOA, right? I, I did a video of it a few days ago. Um, so for distance shooting, for precision shooting, this this can do the job of the variable one to, of the variable one to eight scope, right? So this can do the job of a distance gun. However, this cannot do the job of a CQB gun as well as a red dot, right? For the main reason is. If in this position here, all I see is a black shadow. I actually have to get my face on the gun, get proper eye relief, so that that, that shadow disappears, okay? Um, that is the most important consideration, I think, um, when, when you're considering a 1 to 8 uh, versus the red dot with the magnifier, okay? Um, you know, that, that, now, there are some other important things to consider, okay? With this one over here, you're stuck with a pound and a half. Okay, this is a pound and a half of weight. Uh, you know, you cannot reduce that weight, right? And, and because that's the only aiming system on this gun over here. 
Now, by the way, this base, the base that's holding the, uh, this, uh, this uh, scope, this base is probably just as heavy, if not heavier, than this whole optic over here, okay? All right, so with this, if I want to lighten the weight up, there it goes. Thing comes completely off the gun. So in a nighttime shooting uh, type of situation, there's no reason for this to be on the gun. I'm just going to run with this. And then what I can do, take my little pistol light here, put that on the gun. Okay. And now, okay, basically that looks like a front sight post on top of my gun. Okay. And I can use either lefty or righty with either, either thumb. Now, my dedicated night shooting gun, right, at home, yeah, I mean, I've got uh, a rifle light. Uh, I don't have it here, so, but I have a rifle light with a pressure pad on it that's zip tied down. But because it's zip tied down, that's kind of like married to that gun, right? I can't just take it on and off as easy. And this is a thousand looms right here. My rifle light is a thousand looms. This is a thousand looms. Only difference is this goes on real easy. You just tighten it up over here, right? Then when you don't want it, you undo it, take it off. So the main advantage, one of the great advantages of an AR-15 is that it is a lightweight rifle, right? Uh, you can keep, you can run this very light. Um, so I don't want to put stuff on here um, to make the gun heavier that I can't easily take off, unless I know that that's like the, you know, the main situation where I'm going to be, you know, the, the the main purpose of that gun. So for example, with this gun over here. I mainly use this just for distance shooting, right? That's why I've got the bipod uh, fixed on, to, you know, I have an M-lock bipod fixed onto this. It, it basically lives on the gun, right? And I've got the variable one to eight. I mainly just use this in eight power, you know, occasionally I'll shoot in one power, but um, you know, this is set up for distance shooting, okay? Uh, at one point I actually had a, a, a rifle light on this on the offset uh, with a pressure pad on it. It made the gun stupid heavy. I wasn't shooting it at night often enough, so I, I just took it off. Right? I, I didn't need this gun to be that heavy, especially if I'm if the gun is set up for distance shooting. And distance shooting, I basically do in the daytime, right? At nighttime, how far are you going to be shooting, right? You're not going to be shooting, you know, past 100 yards. I think the, the most I ever shot, uh, when I had the 1,000 loom rifle light on this, uh, I was able to, the most I was able to see was uh, actually was uh, 140 yards, and be able to, you know, I was shooting at a white paper, so it was reflective. That is the furthest I was able to see in the woods with a, with a 1,000 lumen rifle light and, and still be able to, you know, and be able to see the target. When I backed up a little bit further, I, I couldn't even see the white paper, you know, using that 1,000 lumen rifle light. So at night, you definitely don't need an eight power scope because the furthest that you're gonna be able to see um, is probably about 140 yards, despite the fact that they'll say that, that these thousand loom lights are good for 300 yards um you know unless like you're in an open field where light is reflective you're not going to see that far okay so out here in the woods where the trees cast shadows the the furthest that you can possibly get is 140 yards you know you you can probably you can see a target that wants to be seen at 100 yards uh, more most of your engagements will probably be at between 75 yards and in more, more, more at 50 yards than anything because um, still, you know, the trees cast shadows. I mean, that's, that's the reality of, of nighttime shooting. Um, but the point I'm saying is that I, I want to keep this gun as, as light as possible. If I need a rifle light on this, I quickly put the rifle light on. All right? Put it on, tighten it down, right? And take it off when you don't want it. Same thing with the magnifier. I got my 6X magnifier on here. If I, if I, if I need... If, if, I'm, if I move into an open area where we might be shooting at distance, put it on, right? Flip it off to the side, right? If I need it, flip it back over, okay? Now, this is a lot faster than this, okay? okay. One, two, two, right? So it's one, two, uh, two and a half almost. I didn't quite get that. One, two, I, you can kind of do it in two. It's more like two and a quarter turns. One, two, depends on two, two and a quarter turns, depending on how you position your hand. So realistically, you're going to have to do it three times. So that is definitely slower 
than that. Flip it over, go over there, flip it over, go over there, flip it over. Okay, so th this back and forth is way, 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 way faster. Now, uh, the proof, when I watch competition shooters shoot that have variable one to eight scopes, what they usually do is they keep this in eight power, and then they've got like a 45 degree offset over here that has a red dot. So rather than doing this back and forth, what they'll do is uh, eight power to here, one power, they rotate the gun to the side. They get to their, their, their pistol optic, right? They have a pistol red dot on the side over here and they're going back and forth like this, right? So, so uh, my thought is if you're gonna have a one to eight scope, because here's the thing, the, the variable option adds extra weight. Uh, if you were to get a fixed uh, eight power, right? Or fixed 10 power even, right? that's gonna be lighter than the variable scope, right? So I would recommend a fixed eight power with the, you know, you know, if that's what you want. If you, if you wanna, I would recommend a fixed eight power with the pistol at the side, right? Why pay extra for the, for the variable option? Now on this gun, it makes sense for me because I have no intention of putting a pistol, a, a pistol uh, optic at the 45 degree angle. So it makes, and this gun is mainly a dedicated distance shooter, hence the bipod. So it makes a lot of sense for me to keep an optic that can go down to one power. But for most of my guns, right? Because I only have one variable, one to eight. Most of my guns are set up like this, okay? And I take this off when I don't need it. So there are my thoughts on that. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. If you're not a channel, subscribe. I'll talk to you all soon. Hello everyone, I wanted to add uh, a very important point. Um, one of the issues that comes up with using magnifiers behind your red dots is that the magnifier also um, uh, basically enlarges your red dot, right? So if you have a 2 MOA dot with a 3X magnifier, right? Now you've got a 6 MOA dot. Uh, or if you have, let's say, a, a 6X magnifier, now your 2 MOA dot becomes a 12 MOA dot, right? So, so how do you deal with that? How are you going to be able to, um, you know, hit a target at distance uh, when you've got this big dot that's obscuring your your target, right? How is that? How can that possibly be just as good as a distance scope, uh, which has like the fine crosshairs that you can put on the target? Um, well, with the on the rifle that I showed you guys that had the uh, uh, the, the 6x magnifier, right? That was the uh, the Vortex Micro 6x. The the red dot optic that I was using was the uh, Holosun 503G, okay? So that has the chevron, right? Uh, which has that fine tip. And the way you zero that in is you put the tip underneath the bullseye so it doesn't obscure your target. Uh, and then at closer distance, right? If you flip the magnifier off, you, the, the whole chevron basically functions as a dot. You just put that on your target. But at distance, uh, with the magnifier flipped over, you would put that underneath uh, your you would put that underneath your your target. So you, same as you do with your iron sights, right? If you got iron sights, you match them up. You put it underneath the target, so that's nothing too unusual. Um, if you've got a two M way dot, right? So it's going to be round. So at the top of the circle, right? You know you you know it's easy to tell on the circle where the top is. Well, same deal. You zero in your scope so that the dot is underneath your, your bullseye, all right? And so at close distances, if the magnifier is off, you put your dot on the targets. Uh, at further distances with the magnifier on, um, you basically put your dot underneath the target that you're shooting at, right? And then this way you can focus at the top of the circle, which is fine. It doesn't obscure, uh, doesn't obscure your target and, and you're able to take um, well-aimed shots, okay? So, um, you know, and that's the reason why I say that the you know the, the, the magnifier with the red dot can do the job of the variable one to eight scope but not in reverse right the variable one to eight scope can't do the job of the of the red dot if you're especially if you find yourself in an awkward position on the ground you know in some you know um you know weird funky position uh where you can't get a proper cheek weld can't get your face on the gun the way you're supposed to get it um, you know, you're not, you, all you're going to see is, is, is shadow. You're not going to be able to see your, you know, you're not going to be able to, to look through the, uh, through the tube. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a link below to another video that I did 
uh, where I was uh, uh, reviewing the uh, the Vortex uh, Micro 6X magnifier uh, and the Hollow Sun uh, uh, 503G ACSS, where I allow basically I uh, you know I gave you guys a view through the magnifier to, so you guys can see what the reticle looks like when it's magnified uh, six times. So that'll be below in the comments and in the description. Just click on that. It'll take you over to that video and you guys can see what that looks like. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll talk to you all soon.